All right, guys. So now let's talk about tags. Tags are quite incredible. Like they're a huge time saver. Uh, they, it does require a little bit of upfront lifting, but once it's all done, it's it's quite amazing. So, uh, but first let's start with the room tags. Back in the days, you would have to say that is a a master bedroom. That's a garage. You know, that's an office. Whatever each of rooms are, you'd have to just type it out with a text tool. Well, you could add intelligence in Revit with tags. So, but before you click room tag, because you won't be able to do anything here quite yet, you're going to hit architecture and you're going to hit room. Okay. RM is a shortcut. And so what you're telling Revit is that, Hey, identify rooms. So if I click here, you can see Revit kind of goes, Oh yeah, the, this, there's a, an enclosed area. So that must be a room. So I'm just going to click and place a room there and it's actually tagging at the same time in this particular case um, so and then you see here where the rooms are not defined it just tags the whole thing it's fine I'm gonna just leave that as is and I'll just tag this room I'll tag so it's tagging anything that is enclosed okay so I have all of these rooms and of course now I can come in here and I can say that's a MBR master bedroom number one if you kind of hover and you can hit one of these x it'll give you the information here is the room number and the room name so i can come here and change that to room number five. Oh, i have a room number five somewhere so let's change that to room number 15 and then it'll change okay um of course i need to tag all the rooms but this room here is taking up quite a bit of space but really what I want to do is I want to tag the kitchen and the kitchen actually stops somewhere here and then it'll stop here. So what you want to do is you want to go to this room separator and kind of click a line somewhere. And you you see that line drawn and you could overlap it by the way. I'm going to do a really poor one. I just overlap everywhere. And so when I do that, this room tag is kind of isolated within that box. So then I can tag this. So knowing that this is bleeding all over to this hallway, I'm going to separate maybe, I don't know, the, the TV watching room. And maybe this is the, the library. You know, I, I don't remember. I think there was a wall here at one point. And then this is a dining room. So let's just go ahead and separate all of the rooms with the room separator. So they're basically an imaginary line and you could place them anywhere you wish like that. And I can separate that room and that room. Make sure that they're overlapping at least, you know, you don't want this line to be kind of like that because it'll bleed through although Revit to a certain level it'll just know it should be closed so I'm going to also divide up maybe this dining room I'm just gonna say the dining room is somewhere here and here so I have all these rooms divided up now so I can go back in here with room it's gonna tag on placement I'm gonna turn that off for now so so you can see how how to do it slightly differently so I, I tagged all these rooms but you can see it's tagged i mean it's it's identified but it's not tagged with a a label i'm going to call this a room label and you can go here tag a room rt and remember when we started this demo we started with this room tag same tool okay so i'm just going to come here because it's a bigger font and I can say, so Revit knows that these are all rooms. So I'm simply adding a label to the room. So first you need to identify the room, tell Revit this is a room, and then you have to tag it or label it, okay? And so here I can come in here. I could just simply double click and say living room, you know, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Now, some of you guys might be OCD and tell me, Song, these lines are really bothering me. I don't want to see them because it looks weird. Yes, I agree. And so I'm going to hide them. So what you do is you select them. 
And remember, Revit knows that that line is a room separator. So it's a very specific type of line. So uh, I would select one of them, right click, and go to select all instances in the view, and then hide them. Um, I just use a shortcut key EH, which is element hide. I forget where the hide tool is, or I don't even know what it looks like, but it hides it, but it's still there, all right? And to unhide it, you can simply click on this light bulb, and you can see all the room separators. Oh, and I have my tracing. So that's a, that's a really good way to kind of cleanly kind of place each room and label and tag each room. So that is the room tag. What other tag do I want to cover with you guys? Oh, we're going to actually do tags like component tags. So this was simply a text. So let's delete it and let's just add some intelligence. Oh, because if I say sofa, for instance, and if you saw my other video, this is just really a text with the leader that I could point anywhere. When I do this, when I move the sofa, this tag doesn't move and I have to move along with it right so that could be a drag all right so let's tag this sofa all right so we're gonna say tag and I click this and Revit's gonna be like hey I don't know what kind of tags you want so basically when you guys open up a basic Revit file it doesn't give you every possible tool and and items that Revit has so when you get this it's saying hey I know you want me to do this I just don't have the tools to do them. So you're going to say you're going to load one. Yes, it should open up your kind of library. You're going to go to annotation. Oh, let me cancel this. Very important. When I go to hit this, it's going to say there's no tag loaded for furniture. That's the key. There's many different tags, type of tags, guys. So they're saying, hey, for it knows that it was a furniture. And it's saying, hey, I don't have a tag for furniture. So I'm going to say yes. And I'm going to go to annotation. And I'm going to look for a furniture tag. Hmm. Furniture tag. Furniture step. No. Yep, this is what I want. I just want a furniture generic furniture tag. And oh, I think this is going to go for more than 10 minutes. So. I can click this and you see how it just kind of sticks to it. A uh, couple of things. Uh, I could say free end. That allows me to kind of like click, click and do that. Like so similar to that. And in this regard that it has nothing right now, I will show you what that is. But if I move this, you see how the tags move? Because that tag is attached to that item. So that's very nice. Um, Graphically, that looks a little bit weird because it doesn't have an arrowhead or anything like that. Uh, in my office, conventionally, I like to have a little dot instead of an arrow for all the tags so that I can see right away that was a tag and not a note. So if I click on this, I can go to Edit Type. And you see the leader arrowhead? It says None. And therefore, it's not showing me anything. I'm going to come here and I'm going to say, Give me a dot. A small dot that's filled when I want this tag so there it is so now you know that moves with me but now you're saying well why isn't it showing me anything well you need to determine what kind of information you want to draw from this symbol do you want to say it's a sofa or do you typically we give it a tag meaning because sometimes maybe the name's gonna be super long like you know, Viking range, 42 inch, you know. So what you want to do is you want to give it a uh, a type mark or a mark, right? So we're going to kind of do that right now. So let's say if I pick this and I'm going to say, hey, that one's going to be, you know, F3, meaning furniture number three. And then this one's going to be F4. And again, I am changing the mark and this guy is going to be F2. So the so if I click on this, it knows that this furniture is an F3 mark. 
and this is a F4 mark. So now I've set that up. So now I just need to have my tag show F3. So what you want to do is now we're going to get into editing the family. We're going to go to select and we're going to say edit family. And here is a label. Oh boy. Sorry guys. This one's going to be a minute. So here's a label. And if I click on this label, tag label, and I go to edit type, uh, no, sorry, that's not it. <laughs> edit, sorry, edit here. I want to edit this, this label that I've selected. It's telling me, oh, it's showing me the type mark. And I don't want to see that. What I want to see is the mark because I want every individual one to be different. So, so when I say, well, Instead of showing me what a type mark is, I want you to show me what a mark is. Well, obviously nothing's changed here, uh, but when I load this onto the project and override, you can see now F3 comes in because that's a mark. I, I'm saying, show me whatever the mark of what I'm pointing at. So if I click on this, I put the mark to be F3. I can make that to be sofa, so fit. <laughs> sofa and it'll show me sofa right so so that's how you edit that and then when you close this out it's going to ask you to save it please don't save it or if you want to save it do a save as and have um, a folder for your own custom tags that way then you don't save over the original revit tag because this is the original Revit tag, all right? And I don't even know if they'll let you save it. Let me, let me see. Unable to write, yeah. So basically if it's a native Revit family tag, it won't let you save over it. And so I'm just gonna go ahead and close it, uh, but no big deal. I'm not gonna save it, but in my file, this modified tag, will all you know live in my file forever basically so now i can come back and say annotate more tag by category and then you can see now it just automatically uh shows the mark that i've placed right again i select i select the sofa and that's an f4 so there you go so now i've kind of covered room tag kind of custom tag um, bear with me a little bit. Uh, we're going on 13 minutes, but I'm going to give you a window and door tag and then it'll be over. So I'm going to say tag. And then when I hit this, Revit knows it's a window. And this time I'm going to do no leader because I don't like to see a leader. So, all right. So, oh, this is good because then I get to help you guys customize it. I guess it depends on the office that you're working at, but you can see that they're all labeled as number nine. So this means that this window and that one, they're all the same window. And because of the same window, they all have um, a mark, type mark, meaning type vocabulary is super important. When it says type mark, it means that, uh, that was my dog, every... This is a particular type of window, type window type number nine, and they're all the same when they're type window number nine. And in, maybe in some offices they might want you to, uh, they might want you to tag it this way. Um, I personally don't like it because if I change this window, and of course the tag will change too, but you know. Uh, and all of these windows are going to be type number 16. So let me give you an example. So if I tag that, it'll be number 16. So this might be, this might work, but for me, I often get calls from on the field and they'll say, you know, hey, Mr. Architect, this window over by, you know, this room, you know, family room. You know, can we make a replacement or can we make an alternate? Because I can't fit that window there. And my next question is, well, in the family room, I have four windows. Oh, window number nine. 
oh, which window number line? The one that's on the top, the one that's on the left? Oh, yeah, the one on the left, you know? So it becomes really, you know, tough sometimes. So for me, personally, every window and door, I like to give it an individual number. Individual number. So in this case, this window, instead of being a type mark, which means that any window that is 36 by 72 will get a number 9 associated to it, I don't want to see the type mark. What I want to see is the mark. Okay? Here's the mark. And I can type that. I can make any number there that I wish. So how do I make my tag show the mark rather than the type mark? Again, we're going to go here and we're going to go to Edit Family. And we're going to say this label here. Instead of showing me the type mark, get out of there. Show me the mark. And I'm going to load it to my project. And then now every window is going to have a different number, right? Because you're going to, it's going to, every window has a different type mark assigned to it. Or mark, sorry. Confusing you guys. And of course, uh, subtle things, you know, don't do that. I like to pull that dimension line up so that they can see clearly which window we're talking about. So I'm going to go TG, and that's a window number 11, 10, 9, 8. I'm going to stop right here. Why did it label on this side? Because that window, the exterior is on the inside. These two arrow represents. So now i got to move that over, but no big deal. So let me kind of do my little ADHD thing right here to make sure everything is nice and clean. And yeah, so that's how you create custom doors and window tag. And hopefully you guys understood the difference between a type mark and a mark. Mark is individual. Every window, even though they're the same size, could get an individual mark. Type mark is if they're all the same size, they'll all be, they'll all have the same label. All right, guys, thanks for your patience, and I'll see you guys on the next video.